Hello Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Fire Force Chapter 256. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we opened with a pretty standard, um, everyone falling into despair segment before being lifted up by Obi, uh, serving the kind of role laid out for him in 254 about him being a sort of ray of hope for humanity. Uh, and then we saw that over in Adola, Sumi Ray was watching this, and she had some thoughts, which were not positive. Uh, and with those thoughts, we flashed back to 250 years ago, back when everything was in live action still. Uh, so we saw a good bit of live action Sumi Ray. Like I said uh, last time, love how, like, unassumingly creepy they made, uh, or... How unassumingly creepy her, her I guess, actress was um, really captured the vibe of of the, the drawn Sumi Ray. Um, I did promise a um, another reflection on that monologue, because I didn't quite sort out my thoughts on it last time. And I think my thoughts are kind of going to be um, wrapped up in how how Okubo ends up feeling about the mono the monologue in the work as a whole. Specifically with this whole bit here, you, you people worship tons of meaningless opinions on social networks, getting swept up in trends and rumors without ever stopping to think for yourselves. That whole bit. Because I'm curious if what Okubo is saying is she is right on that and that's why things were able to fall to shit. Or if he's saying that she's wrong in a typical like villain wrong way to view the world thing. Um... And I'm hoping it's the latter. I feel like the former is a little bit too much boomer kids these days. Um, but we'll kind of see where the series ends up falling in that regard. Anyway, all that being said, let's jump right on into Chapter 256, The Elusive Reunion. And our picture here is a bunch of like scrawn doppelgangers. We know this because the word doppelganger is all over them. Along with they're here, they're here, they're here. For every person, a shadow comes swooping. Chapter 256, The Elusive Reunion. Uh, and so we hear a voice on the intercom. We see this, like, family, a mother and her, her son, running as, like, roofs are being swept up into the firestorm. A voice on the radio. All citizens, take shelter immediately. Uh, and a piece of, like, tiling kind of flies in front of her. And Obi shows up to, to protect her from the from the thing uh, with, his, with his armor. Uh, and Obi tells them, the shelter's just over there. Oh, right. And Obi goes to comfort her son. What's your name, son? Oh, um, Tatsuto. And Obi tells him with a big old smile, Listen up, Tatsuto-kun. As long as us fire soldiers are around, there's no reason to lose hope. Uh, and we see we see the light of hope returning to Tatsuto. Uh, Obi's goal is working. At least, on, at least for now. We'll see how long it, it actually holds up for. Uh, we see Maki is also protecting people with her second-gen abilities. Go, while there's still time! Everyone! She, she calls as they're leaving after a brief pause. Don't lose hope! Um, she's a bit more, a bit more uh, on the nose there than Obi was. Uh, and just then, Hinoa comes up to Obi. I think we managed to evacuate this area. Uh, and then Obi replies, If we're able to turn even a little of their despair into hope, then... Um... And then we see we see uh, Victor and Joker watching as Victor comments, "Ever the pros, theoretically, as their despair diminish diminishes, the flames should subside." Uh, but we see, specifically by by Victor's use of the word theoretically, but also just in his expression, he is uncertain uh, that that the plan is going to work like like they think it will. Uh, and Joker asks, "Problem? The flames don't seem like they're going down." Exactly. Uh, and Joker looks at, at Victor questioningly, and Victor continues, A rather cruel thought is occurring to me. Uh, and Joker responds, I thought that was the case. Indeed, everyone in this world has worth. That's what I've tried to make myself believe as a member of the Eighth. Um, so this kind of seems to be echoing Sumire's monologue from last time. So we'll see, maybe, maybe Okubo will comment on it much earlier than I thought he would. Um, and Joker responds, the worthless are just swept along, making things worse and feeding the fire. The world is full of brainless fools. Okay, now I'm really unclear where he's going with this. Um, so is he saying that only certain people's hope will make anything better? But if so, who are those people? Because if it's, you know, 
the Fire Force, their hope should be at least trying to to struggle back uh, after Obi's broadcast. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, the world is full of brainless fools. And the brainless can mean nothing but fuel for the fire for the one who set this in motion. And we see Victor looking up at the huge, like, you know, wall of smoke, the firestorms. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to take this. Mm. Somehow I understand. You too, Joker? Uh, and Joker with, like, his hand on his face. Yeah. I understand now. The structure of our world. No. Of our story. I see. Is this going to get even more meta? Because of our story? That could be the whole thing being a manga. Which would certainly be something. Um. Anyway, we then come back to Kareem, who is just watching the firestorms. Uh, and he readies his, his little trombone-looking thing. I forget what it's called. After the tune-up that the 8th Engineer gave my pipe gun. Pipe gun, that's what it's called. This should do it. Turn to ice! And he uses his bell, and a bunch of the firestorms all freeze with thermoacoustic refrigeration. Uh, and Rekka looks up at it. That should slow down the damage. Uh, and then we see uh, Kareen, who's using his, like, shield ability to protect some people. Um, and then he calls back, I got the citizen secure inside the barricade. Uh, and Pawn calls him, good work, Kareen. Thank you, sir. Saving the people ought to give them hope. But just then, the blockade explodes. Um, and we see a, a member of Company 4 is kind of caught under the smoke, and Pawn calls for him. Are you all right? And just then, an axe appears and, like, shunks itself into his head. Okay. Uh, and he falls. We see it's, it's wielded by a man who's, like, ripped. Um, there's something about the way he's drawn. He might be a doppelganger or some, of some, cor some sort. He's not normally... Like, normally doppelgangers are very, like, charred and black. But he doesn't look like that. But he hits the ground. Pom looks up in agony and, like, fear. Oh, there he is. It's Hog. It's Hog's doppelganger. Okay. Yeah, that explains... That explains Pond's reaction. And I love the art for him. The kind of, like, like very sketchy lines they've give, given him. That just looks cool. Um, though given what, the, the one question I have is that given what we know about doppelgangers, the doppelgangers are largely kind of echoes of how their source people are seen. What about Hog would make people think he would kill his own men? Like, with Hibachi, it was his general disdain for the Empire. Um, but I'm not sure about Hog. Uh, and he, and Hog throws his axe right into, into Pond's gut. Gah! And as he falls, as, as, uh, we just see Hog, like, intimidatingly having thrown the axe, Kareem calls, Captain Pond! I'm fine. Um... And Hog just looked at him. I, I, I saw. Uh, and Kareen is just, no, it can't be. Uh, and Pond tries to comfort him. It isn't. It's a doppelganger. And Hog says, I saw Hog. That's a weird thing for your doppelganger to say. Uh, we see Kareen, who is kind of exhausted in the aftermath of freezing, like, multiple tornadoes at once. <sighs> <sighs> Uh, and then some of the some of the citizens call out, I knew the first could do it. You guys really put us at ease. And Ho Yan looks around. It seems we're returning hope to the people. I hope this settles the flames. Uh, and just then, someone shows up. Captain, Lieutenant, new large-scale disasters are popping up everywhere. Uh, and Ho Yan, it can't be. Nothing's changing. Uh, and we see from one of the frozen tornadoes, it starts to crack open. And then all of these explosions light up in the middle of it. And as the kind of steam and smoke starts to like pour over Kareem and Hoyan, Kareem looks at Kareem, I mean, having Kareem and Kareem in the same chapter is a little confusing, but you know who I mean. And we see Kareem's shock. As Rekka is here. I'm back! The dirty, hot blooded son of a bitch is back. The shadows of the dead return to attack the living. To be continued after 257, The Bastard Incarnation of Hot-Blooded Despair. 
okay, that's one hell of a chapter title for next week. I mean, at least we know who that's about. Uh, next week seems to be fully focused on Rekka. Um, this chapter also kind of works in two halves, uh, much like last time. The first one kind of climaxes with that Joker-Victor conversation, which I'm trying to, to think of, I'm trying to work, work through. Um, like, I don't like, if the series, I don't want, I desperately don't want the series to make its final theme, you know, the masses don't largely matter, uh, it's only the, the will of the select few that are important in the grand scheme of things. I think that's just, honestly, it's just an uninteresting take. It's, it's unique for Shonen, but, like, it's unique because people are generally aware that it's a bad take. Um, like, sometimes a take is unique because everyone knows that it's bad, and so no one bothers with it. Um, and that take is kind of bad. <laughs> and I still don't know how exactly that whole bit of thematic pondering is going to work out. Um, there still is definitely, I'm interested in the line Joker has about, or Victor has, about the structure of our world, no, of our story. Like, given that we know there is a shift from the live-action pre-cataclysm world to the modern, you know, animated um, present-day world, is that going to be even, even more? I'm trying to find the right word for that. Is it going to be even bigger than we thought? It's not just the world becoming, you know, anime, anime-esque. But it's specifically becoming a manga? Is that the route Okubo is going here? In that case, could the evangelist just be Okubo himself? I don't know. That's a lot to ponder. Especially if Okubo wants this to be his final work, as I've kind of heard. You know, everything ending with Okubo as the main villain and then being killed by his protagonists is certainly a take. It is certainly a thing that could happen. Um, but I don't know. I'm not this big fan. Like... It's one thing when Sumirite does it, because she is very clearly evil. Um, but Victor has this whole, where is it? Um, um, I've tried to make myself believe that everyone has worth as a member of the Eighth, uh, but he can't make himself believe it. As, as um, you know, as instantly after that line, he and Joker start talking about the worthless and the brainless, um, which shows he's kind of, not succeeding there. Um, and honestly, like, it's better than it being, like, Obi. Uh, given that, given Joker and Victor's status as, like, anti-heroes, I could see them... I could more, more comfortably say that Okubo is having them, um, spout these ideas and then we'll get proven wrong. Much more that, much more than I would if it were, like, Shinra or Obi or someone like that. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not a fan of that, that, thematic pondering and we'll see what comes of it in the end it could very well like it's still like there's no real there's still something to this scene that we don't know yet um specifically like where exactly this line of reasoning ends up taking victor now that he understands the structure of our world or of our story where we still need to see that we still need to see what it is that will hopefully kind of clarify where Okubo is going with all this thematically. Um, then we have the more traditional shonen action part of, of the chapter, uh, which is a pair of doppelgangers coming back. Um, and honestly, the first thing that really comes to mind is there are two intro pages, page 16 and page 21. And if you look at, at Hog, Hog looks very different. You know, both from how absurdly... What, I think he actually was buff. I don't think he was quite this monstrous looking, though, in the past. Um, especially just with how, like, sketchy he's drawn. Um, like, he's not the kind of... Like, look, even looking at, at the page before, you know, it's all, like, the clear lines of a normal manga. And then Hog is just, you know, his scarf is not even fully colored in. Um, and then comparing that to, say, Rekka, who is drawn literally in the clothes he wore as the lieutenant of Company One. Um, 
there's definitely a difference between the two of them. It might just be that Rekka was a white clad from the beginning, and so he's gone through less change as a doppelganger. Um, but I don't know. Like, how was Hog seen? Because his doppelganger should be a representation of how he was viewed by the public at large. I mean, he was kind of a weird dude, even when he was alive, so he might have a somewhat negative representation in the public sphere. Um, I don't know. I just do not know. Uh, hopefully more time with Hog will kind of illuminate what exactly is going on with him, why his doppelganger is like this, is killing his own men. Um, Rekka, of course, makes much more sense. You know, by this point, everyone knew he was a white clad. Their whole collective unconscious of him was as a white clad. Uh, he's basically the same guy he was when he died 200 chapters ago. Um, so yeah, that's, that's chapter 256. Um, there's a lot I'm not super thrilled with, but we'll still see, we still have to see where exactly Okubo is taking all of this newfound, newfound, you know, pondering about the brainless. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still, we'll just have to wait and see. On the other hand, the back half I was much happier with. The hog thing is confusing, but it feels like it's supposed to be confusing for now. Um, and then Rek is back. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I will say, the, the first Brigade arc gets a lot of crap for just not being very good. Um, but the one thing I noticed when the anime came out, re-watching the Shinra Rekka fight, is that the actual fight itself was really good. Like, some great, tense, you know, fight choreography that Okubo was always excelled in in this series, that we just occasionally get sidetracked by the worst fan service you've ever seen. Um, and so, my... So I'm not that unhappy about Rekka being back. Rekka, the problem with that arc was not Rekka himself. It was how the narrative treated Tamaki. Um, so yeah, Rekka could still be a lot of fun, especially especially having him actually, you know, he was mostly dead. He didn't really have a conversation with Kareem and Hoyan, actually, now that I think about it, after he was revealed to be the white uh, with the white clad. He just like, Kareem showed up, instantly froze him, and then Arrow killed him. Um, so that could be honestly really, really good. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that, now that I've actually kind of thought about that. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say for this chapter. Hope y'all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like, or subscribe, or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!